I love a lot. David said it's okay if he did that. And uh, y'all know from Power Hour, she has a tremendous new tape going out entitled Beyond Treason. Would y'all welcome, please, Dave, uh, Dr. Joyce and Joyce Riley Von Kleins. Where is she? I really want to thank you all for being here today. As you all know, Dave and I do a radio show. <laughs> we try to do a radio show. How many of y'all listen to Power Hour? All right, yes. And I'd like to know, if you have been helped by anything you've heard on the Power Hour radio show as far as health news, that kind of thing, if you've been helped and there's a product that has helped you especially, I'd like for you to stand up. Just stand up. Everybody who's been helped by a product in the Power Hour. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that incredible, listeners? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See, that, that is so inspiring to me because when I was a nurse for 30 years, I couldn't show you that. I couldn't see people that were helped by the things that we did for them. Those of you who may not know, when I was a nurse uh, early on, I uh, was a chemotherapy nurse, certified chemotherapy nurse. I was also a heart, lung, liver, kidney transplant nurse. And way back when I was early in my nursing career, I was involved in doing electroshock therapy. So you see, I've been through it, and I've seen the other side. And I don't like what I did then. I really don't like what I did then. Because now I have seen things that really, really work. And I appreciate very much those of you who are willing to have faith in the power hour and in what we do, that we can bring you the items that we believe work and we know work. Because you see, back in 1991, when I served my country as a flight nurse, and I know it's all over the internet, I was never a nurse, I was never in the military, I was never, you know, the way the hit and run people do on the internet, they want to make you think that everybody that talks is, is, uh, has some other ulterior motivation. Well, I'll tell you what, in 1991, I took 10 shots at Kelly Air Force Base, and my life was never the same. So I tried to find the answer, the thing that would make us feel better, make us well, and it wasn't in the medical establishment, I can assure you. And I would like to ask how many of you served your country in the military? How many of you, for the right reasons, Believe for the right reasons that you were serving your country in military service. How many of you? Raise your hand. All right. I'd like to thank you all because you believed in what you were doing at that time, I know. You believed in what you were doing just like I did. My father was a belly gunner on a B-17. He was a, a sergeant in the Air Force. My mother was in the Navy. And now my mother was, uh, is now sub, almost 80 years old, and she was in the Navy. And my mother outranked my father, so I always say I came from a dysfunctional family. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to know how many of you served in, and I'd like to see the raise of hands in the branches of service that you served in. Those of you that served in the Navy, raise your hand, please. All right, thank you very much for your service. Those of you that served in the Army, raise your hands. Thank you very much for your service. Those of you that served in the Marines. Wait a minute, I didn't hear a thing. I'm supposed to believe you're a Marine? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Call yourself a Marine. Okay, Guard and Reserve. All right. Now, Army. Oh, I did Army, Navy. Uh, no. The real service. All right, the real service, Air Force. How many of you in the Air Force? All right, thank you very much. We're reserved. We're politically correct. Anyway, I want to thank you all for being here because you are the stars of this, and I hope that there are going to be more of you that are going to be up on the stage next year. That's what I hope every year, is that you will become a committee of one and say, I've had it. I'm going to find my area that I'm going to experiment in, and I am going to become good at it, and I'm going to be knowledgeable at it. And I hope that each and every one of you will do that. And I also want to thank someone that's here today. There are, you know, it's so great when people come up. Cheryl from Ohio just introduced herself to me. Those of you who listen to Power Hour know Cheryl from Ohio. Um, there are so many of you that are here today that we know your names, but you look a lot different in person than you do on the radio. I guess you know that. And uh, I want to say that there's a, a guest that we had recently on the program, and I'd like for her to come up right now because the, many of you listened to the sad, very tragic story of Lisa Mullinex. Lisa Mullinex is the mother of a beautiful baby 
who uh, unfortunately her husband now is serving a life sentence or maybe serving a life sentence, we don't know. I don't know the rest of the story. But her baby died of, they alleged, something that we think is probably a reaction to vaccines which is happening all over the country. And you heard her tragic story. She is a wonderful, wonderful lady. She's a high school teacher. And I'd like for Lisa Mullinex to come up here and be recognized. Lisa, would you please come up so we can say thank you. This lady is so brave, what she and her husband have been through, who is now incarcerated, right, Lisa? Yeah. So he is now incarcerated where? In Clinton County, in, in central Pennsylvania. In central Pennsylvania, for a crime that he didn't commit. And I want you all to remember them in your prayers. And they lost a beautiful baby. Do you have your baby's picture here? It's down there? It's down there. And she'll be glad to show it to you. They lost a beautiful baby. And if you're going to vaccinate, ladies and gentlemen, please know what you're doing. Please know what you're doing if you decide to vaccinate those beautiful babies. Because I know Lisa would probably do things a lot differently now, wouldn't you? And what would you say to people if you were to say it, um, to, to, to tell them something? I would tell them to investigate before they vaccinate. Investigate before you vaccinate, listeners. So let's keep Lisa and her family in your prayers. This is the Power Hour guest on the uh, Power Hour program. All right? Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we want to reward those who tell the truth because telling the truth is what it's all about. And I forgot my scripture back there. Would somebody look in the back of my booth back there and get the scripture? I came up here so fast, my scriptures, I wanted to share something. And uh, you know, we need to keep sight of what our mission is. And I don't know what your mission is. All I know is I wanna inspire you to get out there and do something. Because I used to listen to the Chuck Harder radio show. And you know what Chuck Harder used to say? Become a committee of one. Thank you so much. Become a committee of one. This is a gift I got today from one of the listeners in the audience, and I want to thank her very much for this. Um, last night, when I went to bed, I didn't want to go out and get my scriptures. I left it out in the car, and I was lazy, so I thought, well, I'll just grab the one that's in you know, the table beside the bed. And you know the one beside the bed, the, the King James Version that you always have there. And they, what is the name of that company that puts, Gideon, Gideon thank you very much, the so Gideon that puts it there. And I thought, well, I'll just read that, because I was too lazy to go out and get my own scriptures. So in the back of the, the, the King James Version of this, in our room, there was a handwritten note from a man who had read, written in there from Nebraska, and he put a verse in there. And I thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to read that verse. So I did, and I, Dave and I were reading this last night, and I wanted to share it with you. It was a verse that some man had written in there uh, a while back. And if you use uh, the scriptures, it's Tehillim or Psalms 118, and he had written, read Psalms 118, 8 and 9. So I thought, well, I will do that. It is better to take refuge in Yahweh than to trust in princes. Amen. All the Gentiles surrounded me in the name of Yahweh, I sh shall cut them off. They surrounded me, yea, they surrounded me in the name of Yahweh, shall I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. But here's a verse that was interesting, verse 13 of chapter 118 pushing the enemy pushed me to fall but Yahweh helped me and you know I don't push against anything I expose the truth and I'm going to continue to expose that as long as I live and I want you to think in terms of that rage has seized me because of the wrong who forsake your Torah teach me your good sense and knowledge the proud have forged a lie against me is that not true with all my heart I observe your orders their heart has become like fat, without feeling. I am delighted in your Torah. It was good for me when I was afflicted that I might learn your laws. The Torah of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. And I just want to say that I am so grateful for the scriptures in 118, 119, and 120 that I was reading last night. My being has dwelt too long with him who hates peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for fighting. Support me according to your word that I might live, and put me not to shame because of my expectation. Sustain me that I might be saved, and always look to your laws. You have made light of all those who stray from your laws, for falsehood is their deceit. So we are about truth here, and what you're going to be seeing right now is more of the truth. 
And I am grateful that I became ill in 1991 with something called the Gulf War illness. Out of those troops that served, and there were nearly 700,000 that served in the first Gulf War, out of those troops that served, over 425,000 are now sick. And do you think Fair and Balanced Fox would tell you about that? No. They want you to see all the guys coming back from the second Gulf War, the second Iraq War on one leg or no arms. They want you to feel sorry for the troops. They want you to name highways after them. You know, they name memorials and highways after the military as if that's, we're supposed to go, wow, I don't need any compensation. I don't need any medical care. All I need is a highway named after me, right? Or another statue. And I couldn't believe it when we were coming into West Virginia and we saw the Nurses Veterans Highway. I told Dave, wow, now it's all okay. We have a highway named after us. Well, you know what? I'm saying to the Department of Defense, you are lying to us. You are killing these troops. Now, what we have done is something called Beyond Treason. It's a documentary that's going to be coming out in a, about a week or two. And in this documentary, you are going to see the experimentation on our military without their consent. The experiments that have been done, not all of them. We couldn't possibly do all of them. There's too many of them. But what I'm going to show you are many experiments. You're going to get to see some previews now. And in fact, before we do the DVD, I think I'll do the, uh, the VHS if we're ready to do the VHS. I have a tribute here to play if the VHS is ready to work. And I don't know, is the VHS ready to go? We're having a technical problem. Okay. And uh, well, we'll wait in just a second because I do have a tribute to do uh, to somebody here in the audience. But I want to say that what is happening right now in the second Gulf War is also beyond treason. If I were to tell you what's really going on over there, most of you would not believe it. I had a recent call from a troop that just returned from Iraq who is sick. I had a call from a wife who just lost her husband. He returned from Iraq on February 14th and died on April 14th. He was home one day before he died. The military sent him home and he had DU poisoning and they told him he had DU poisoning. He got, to, you know how, those of you who are in the military, you know what I mean when it's time to go home and you're going to get to see your family again, you've been gone for a year and that's all you think about is being able to see that family member. And you, you just imagine over and over again what it's like to see him come down the flight of those steps of the plane. And you've got all the families in the hangars and welcome home signs and all the kids are waiting to see daddy. But when daddy got off the plane, daddy was really sick. She saw her husband and could not believe the condition he was in. The Department of Defense had not allowed him to come home even though he had tumors and had been diagnosed with cancer over there. They brought him home and found out how severe it was and he went immediately into the hospital, never to come home. And she told me the story about when he died and I, I, I don't want to go into it right now for several reasons because there's some problems with the Department of Defense that they are afraid that they will make for her. But it was an unbelievable situation when he died and what he said to her and how he let her go. That's not what we send people to off to war for. You know, this military is now protecting the interest of the global elite. There's no question about that. Our military is not to protect us from enemies foreign and domestic. It's to make way for the new world order. Now, if you've been watching television lately and you've been seeing the orange and blue on television, well, driving down here, I couldn't believe it. Denny's has now si changed their sign to light blue. You're seeing all the logos changing to light blue and orange. You will see that Fox has changed to light blue and orange. Uh, CNN has changed to light blue and orange. In fact, today on C-SPAN, light blue and orange logo. Get ready for the UN blue. Have you seen the Air Force One aircraft? It is now light UN blue. You can go to thepowerhour.com and see the website, and you can see the picture of George Bush and the aircraft. It is light UN blue. They're getting ready. And that tells you how the Bilderbergers and all those organizations that have control are able to put the word down, light blue and orange will be the colors. And they're doing it. So get ready and expose the truth. Now we're going to do a little bit. Do we have the VHS ready or the DVD? We have the VHS, OK? Then Phyllis. I would like, wait a minute, before you start it, before you, you can stop it for just a second. I'd like for Phyllis Coy to come up here for just a second, if she would, please. Phyllis? 
Phyllis, if you don't know Phyllis Coey, you need to get to know her. Phyllis Coey is an incredible lady who gave it all. She gave her son for what he believed in. Her beautiful, beautiful son. It, it, the book is back there. You can see the book. You can read about her son. You all know who she is. She calls on the power hour, and she is a mainstay. She's been fighting the New World Order, the bad guys, for many, many years. She has been doing, she was fighting before, you know, when I was sucking my thumb and thinking, hey, isn't it a great world, watching Ozzie and Harriet. She was fighting for us. And I personally want to say thank you to Phyllis. I love you with all my heart. Oh, you have meant so much to us. And I want you to watch this. This is a portion of Beyond Treason. I want you to see what happens here, Phyllis. This is a young man named Dennis Kine. He's been on the program. His book is back there. She knows Dennis Kine. And I want you to watch what happens here. Let's run a, beyond, a section of Beyond Treason. The minute you walk into a recruiter's office, the first thing they say is, young man, if you do this, you'll be taken care of forever. And in modern day, the 2021st century soldier, it includes women. So men and women are promised health care should they become sick from the battlefield. And the fact of the matter is, is that since Operation Desert Storm concluded, 10 to 11,000 soldiers are dead. A quarter of a million of us get a check from the Veterans Administration for undiagnosed illnesses. And double that amount have actually gone to the Veterans Administration and entered into study groups known as ionizing radiation study groups and Gulf War depleted uranium study groups. And that's just being used as a guinea pig. So we were abused by the Department of Defense. We got sent to a contaminated battlefield. We came home, we were being studied by the Veterans Administration. And every time we turn around and look for some help, somebody calls us a post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's not appropriate. We're not stressed out, we're sick. We've been contaminated. I do what I do every day because the system hurt me. Phyllis, you're on the air with Dennis Kine. Go ahead, please. I just want to take time, Dennis, to thank you so much and be able to say this personally to you. And, and uh, I want to urge the folks to order your book. And uh, I, I can't go at the pace that I used to. And I, I, I'm you know, so thankful for someone like you to help some of us old timers. It hurt me as a soldier and it hurt me as a veteran. And I don't want to see anybody else get hurt. I don't do this because I need to inflict any pain on anybody. I do this because young men and women enter voluntarily into a system to go serve their country, serve their friends, serve their family, and serve their fellow Americans. Say to Phyllis Coey, who gave the ultimate sacrifice, that was her voice. That was her voice calling in to thank Dennis Kine. And we need to thank Phyllis Coey for what she did for so many years. And I just want to say that Phyllis, from now on, whatever you need from the Power Hour, we're going to give it to you whatever you need, because that's the least we can do for you for what you've done for us. So any of the products, because I know you use a lot of them, and it's helped you, hasn't it? My husband. Yeah, and to George. And we need to remember George, and of course, John Allen and your other son, Ed, Ed who is a teacher, who is an incredible young man also. We just want to thank her so much for what she's done, and, and uh, we're going to give you all the products you need from the Power Hour, okay? <laughs> Yeah. God love you. This is just Mom Coy, and you're just all my adopted family. <laughs> I, I just love you all so much. And I had a husband, and I had two sons that were such troopers. And my husband and my one son's gone now. I have my grandchildren and my one son. But this is why we got to keep going. Yes. We're going to go, and we're not going to stop. That's right. We will we're gonna not go. Stop. stop. That's right. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me help you down here. Thank you, sweetheart. Now we're going to move into, thank you very much, Phyllis. Her husband, George, died. Uh, I think it was about a year ago, and what a tragedy it was, what a man we lost. I, I really idolized that man, and I just want to thank her for all that she has done when we weren't even knowing what was going on. In 1991, when I was at Kelly Air Force Base, and, they, and I, was, I remember putting my flight suit on that day and shining up my bars and making sure I was all ready to go because I was so proud to be serving my country, 
and George Bush comes on the air and says, this is a new order, a new world order. And I'm going, yeah, whatever that means, that sounds great. I didn't even know what it meant. And here Michael knew at the same age, he was, what, 22 years of age, he's standing up and saying, not no, but heck no to the new world order and to you in blue, and I'm not even knowing what he's doing in 91. And I learned the hard way when I became ill with the Gulf War illness. And after that, I had to claw my way back to feel good. And I promised my Heavenly Father that I will not stop until these troops are well. And if that means I have to do it for the rest of my life, so be it. You know, I was a flight nurse in the Air Force. I was a captain then. I'm no longer a captain, and I did not retire. And I did not serve in the theater of operations, as I've always said. I served as a reservist and backfilled the Air Force flights here in the US. But I got those vaccines, and I became ill. So now what we've done is beyond treason. And in just a second, I'm, Dave's going to come up and do his portion of the program. But I want to thank very, very much Dave. I have to thank Dave for all the incredible work he's done in the Power Hour, for the humor that he adds to the Power Hour, because he adds such a tremendous insight to it that I can't add. And then, of course, there's some things that I do that he can't do, <laughs> that uh, we work together. <laughs> And it's, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun in the studio during breaks sometimes, too. Let me tell you then what's going on with the, the Gulf War II troops for right now, if they can still work on that. Let me tell you that what we know is they are sick over there. We have not had 120,000 troops go over to the Persian Gulf like you've heard. There have been closer to 2 million troops. You didn't know that, did you? We have rotated almost 2 million active duty guard and reserve to the Persian Gulf. And that means we're going to have close to 2 million troops that are coming back sick. They are keeping them over there for 18 months. Then when they bring them back, they're told, you have to go back and serve again. If you signed a contract recently with the US military, you signed a contract as an enlisted person that says not only will you serve your time, but then after you get out, after your four years or whatever, they have the right to send you back for the next three years. So that means that you're going to have three more years, and as it stands now, what's happening is you're back for two or three months, and you get a free trip to Iraq again. Now what is happening is that depleted uranium is killing these troops. Depleted uranium is a byproduct of the nuclear weapons industry. I'm not going to go into the technique, uh, technical aspect of it. The video will do that. And it will be out, like I said, in a couple of weeks. And you can go to beyondtreason.com and see a two-minute trailer from the video. But what is happening is that the Department of Defense had a lot of leftover uranium from the nuclear weapons industry. So they said, well, let's put it in stuff that we need for war. Because as we all know, war is to make money. So they made these projectiles, the 120 millimeter shell in the M1A1 main battle tank and the uh, 20 millimeter shell, or the, uh, I think it's a 20 millimeter shell in the um, uh, A-10. Anybody correct me on that? 30 millimeter. 30 millimeter shell in the A-10 aircraft, thank you. And the head of that, or the end of it, the tip of that, is made of depleted uranium. When you hold this shell in your hand, you are getting radiated. When you fire that shell, it becomes pyrophoric, it catches on fire, when it hits its target, it goes into billions of little pieces. When that happens, and these aerosol, aerosolized little particles, you breathe them in. They're smaller than a virus. Our troops are breathing them in right now with every breath they take. Why do you think they keep rotating the generals home so fast? They don't keep them over there very long, and the high-ranking people. But the enlisted guys, 18 months, no problem. You can breathe that stuff in all day long. They don't care. Now, the U.S. government has known since the 1940s and 50s that there has been a problem with depleted uranium. Now, on the DVD, it's going to be about an hour and 40 minutes. It's almost too hard to watch in one setting. But not only are you going to get a DVD, you are going to get a CD with about 3,000 pages of documents on it. And a lot of these, the DOD would just assume we didn't put out. But we decided that you're going to get the CD-ROM of all the documents you can download yourself. And some of them have been scanned in the original document, or not the original, but copies of the original documents. So you'll be able to have the documents yourself. And we did that 
because you know how many, they want to just crucify you after you do a DVD. I don't know if Dave knows anything about that, having done 9-11 in plain sight, but uh, you know, they will really attack you. Well, you know what? I'm not going to take any attacks. I'm just going to let them go to the documents. Now, we have the documents from Agent Orange that they don't want on there. They were formerly classified, and they were listed as classified documents. They have been declassified, though I know, that they don't want you to see. So these documents will be on that uh, CD-ROM. We go from Agent Orange up through Operation White Coat. How many of you are familiar with Operation White Coat? Oh, wow, you're going to get an introduction. You know about Operation White Coat. Wait till you see about Operation White Coat, the experimentation on 3,000 Seventh-day Adventist young men. Yeah. Oh, why did they pick Seventh-day Adventist? Because the church turned them over to them yeah. at Fort Detrick, Maryland, yeah. Yeah. and said, take our boys and fill them full of biological warfare agents and test them. Oh, guess what? Seventh-day Adventists don't drink coffee. Seventh-day Adventists don't drink. They sure don't put biological warfare agents in their bodies, do they? <coughs> but they did. That's Operation White Coat. You will see the pictures of those men that were experimented upon. Then we go into the drug BZ. How many of you know what BZ is? Oh, you're going to get an introduction into an aerosolized hallucinogenic agent they sprayed over Vietnam. You heard of all the friendly fire incidents when the men started killing their own troops? Well, they were sprayed with a hallucinogenic agent that doesn't last 48 hours like LSD. It lasts sometimes six weeks. It was an experiment on our own military during Vietnam. Wait till you see that. That's all going to be in here along with MKUltra because they use that in the military also. But we have the documents. In fact, we're going to put many of the documents from the original MKUltra pages on the document, on the CD-ROM. So our U.S. government has experimented over the past 50 years. We have the government's own document that says the following. Over the past 50 years, hundreds of thousands of our military have been experimented upon without their consent. It needs to stop. But you know what? It's going on today. The depleted uranium is this this radioactive agent that is basically breathed in, internalized, taken into the very core of these men. In fact, the test done on some of the British veterans shows that they have it in their bone marrow now. They breathed it into their lungs in less than 0.2 microns uh, of size. It goes into your lung and it never comes out. And some of the doctors have talked to me and told me that it is equivalent. These troops are having the equivalent of one chest x-ray every hour the rest of their lives. It is that bad. Why are they developing cancers early on? Why are they getting six and eight tumors? Why are they having tumors all over their bodies? That's why. It is a carcinogen. And the U.S. government is allowing a carcinogen to be used over there. Now, they did a uh, technical film briefing and training program for the U.S. military, of which we were able to get a copy of. Those of you who are interested in it, it's on a DVD in the back, it's on a VHS tape in the back with Dr. Doug, Dr. Doug Rocky. We actually have the actual U.S. military training film in which it says you must have protective gear, you must test these people after they've been exposed to it, and it gives all the regulations, and guess what? They're not doing them. Now, my fear and my concern is for those of you who have loved ones in Iraq right now. The, troop, the troops that I've been talking to that have returned that served in Bosnia, that served in Yugoslavia, first Iraq war, Afghanistan, and second Iraq war are being poisoned. There is no way they can possibly have a healthy life. In fact, many of them, I got a, report, I got a call from a reporter the other day, a reporter from a uh, newspaper who said he is doing a story, he's being real quiet about the story, but he found out that military people are being told to adopt now that are in Iraq. It will poison the DNA for possibly seven generations, is what we're being told. On this documentary, Beyond Treason, you will see the babies being born in Iraq and what's happening to them. Yes, they are unbelievably deformed. I'm being told now that more deformed babies are being born in Iraq than in the U.S. And as I know Dr. Deagle will tell you a little bit later, the DU dust is blowing all over the world. Like you said last night at dinner, we've got it right here at dinner with us. DU dust is being breathed in by everybody. 
Now, what's the purpose here? And do they have a method of cleanup and a method of detoxification? I think they probably do for the good guys, the elite. But are they going to give it to us? I don't think so. So we need to take care of ourselves right now. And that's why detoxification is so important the minute these guys return from Iraq. They need to get with a good naturopathic physician or a chiropractor that knows about this and get detoxed with those heavy metals as much as possible. You know, Yahweh God, our God gave us everything we needed. He said so in the scripture. I will give you everything we needed, you need. But we said, no, that's okay. We've got Pfizer. We've got Eli Lilly. We've got Burroughs Welcome. And we didn't need all those things. It was easier to take that little pill than it was to go and find cilantro. You know why cilantro? Because cilantro chelates heavy metals out of the body. Did you know that? Fresh cilantro chelates heavy metals out of the body. But we didn't want to believe that this thing that we eat could do us any good. That's just for salsa. And cilantro is in salsa. Well, let me tell you, you need to get back to spices, unirradiated spices. And that's why we uh, have been involved with North American Urban Spice. They have unirradiated spices. And they've saved my life, I believe. I, I know the way I function today is 10 times better, 100 times better because of what I've learned. Spices were things that in South America, they used them all the time in their food. You know how heavily spiced food is from the Middle East and from areas where they don't have any refrigeration? Why? Because God gave us spices that kill bacteria, kill viruses. And in fact, we have a spice report at the Power Hour that you can write for, and it's from the Quarterly Review of Biology, and in it, it lists every bacteria killed by the spices. And it was an in vivo and in vitro testing, meaning they tested it in the Petri dish and tested it in people. Orega Sun, those of you who have used it, will kill SARS. They did in vivo and in vitro testing on that, and it will kill SARS in 20 minutes. 99.9% .9 of the bacteria is killed by oregano, the special form of Mediterranean oregano, and sage and cumin together. But you see, unbeknownst to us, we didn't know that the U.S. government knew this before we did, and in the 1960s began irradiating spices in this country. Did you know that? So when you go to the grocery store and buy your spice, it is irradiated. The things that he made for us, that he gave to us to keep us well, we need to go back and find those again. And I know a lot of you are going to herbal training now. A lot of you are finding out about these items. And that's why, as a nurse who was a chemo nurse who was involved in uh, flight nursing in the Air Force, and then, of course, I was a heart, lung, liver, kidney transplant nurse down in uh, Houston, Texas, at the Texas Heart Institute. And that's, you know, kind of the belief is, you don't need to take care of your organ, you know, we'll just give you another one, right? A new heart, lung, liver, kidney. No. We have to take care of what Yahweh God gave us in the first place. And so that's what I'm about right now is finding things that work for people. Now, I want to tell you, I was telling you about this uh, young man that called me recently. And he called us at the Power Hour and he said, uh, and the American Gulf War Veterans Association, of course, you know I'm a spokesperson for that. And we are standing in the face of the Department of Defense and saying, calling them basically uh, murderers for what they're doing to our military, for having experimented upon them and not treated them over the past 50 years. And we're the only organization doing that. And yeah, we are being hit real hard with attacks. But you know what? The truth will show itself. And I simply stand back and say, we'll see. Have I been wrong about anything from the first Gulf War? No. Are they dying? Yes. And I don't want to be right either. Believe me, I don't want to be right. Well, this man called the office the other day and he said, do you guys help vets here? And we said, well, yes, we try to whenever we can. Well, I just want to know if anybody does, because I got back from Iraq three months ago, and I am sick as a dog, and the VA won't even talk to me. Nobody will talk to me. American Legion won't talk to me. VFW won't talk to me. Nobody. He says, does anybody care about a vet that came back from Iraq? And I said, yes, we do. Well, at the time, I wasn't talking to the person over the phone. He says, well, what can you do for me? And we said, well, you know, let's talk about it. What's going on with you? And sure enough, he is unbelievably sick. And the VA will do one thing for you. You go to the VA, they're going to give you a psych testing. They're going to test you to see and do a psych eval. And if you have something wrong with you that can be linked to a psychiatric illness, well, guess what? You're going to get a psychiatric diagnosis. And you will not have a physical ailment. Because they want you to be a psychiatric patient because then it's easy to write you off. PTSD, just like Dennis Kine was saying. 
This kind is suffering from depleted uranium also. He returned in 2003 from Iraq. So the whole idea now is to find out what it is, or excuse me, 2004. The whole idea now is to find out how we can help these troops coming back. Well, this one young man, I'll call him John, was very irritated with me uh, when I got on the phone with him. And he said, well, I can't believe you called me back so soon. And I said, well, I understand you're in trouble. What can we do for you? And he said, well, um, I need some help. He said, I can't get a job. The VA, they kicked me out of the military basically when I got back. And you know why they're doing that? Because they don't want these people to be in the military and get benefits. They don't want them to be disabled. So they're getting them out of the military as fast as they can. And then they're saying, we've got to have a, 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 a base realignment and closure, and we've got to cut down more bases, and we've got to uh, get rid of these people out of the military, and we're short of people in the military? I don't understand it. Well, why are we there? That's because they're heading toward the draft. These troops are going to be sick. I got a call from a guy in Af just returned from Afghanistan, and he said, I will tell you right now, all the way up to our lieutenant colonel are sick in our unit, and nobody will talk about it. Everybody's scared to discuss it. And they're scared now because they didn't listen to the Gulf War I people. And the Gulf War I people, like myself, didn't listen to the people coming back from Vietnam. You guys that came back from Vietnam and told us those horror stories about Agent Orange and you had the foot fungus, we just said, ah, you just want to be taken care of for a lifetime. You got a mental problem, probably because that's what we were told by the media, right? PTSD, BZ that was sprayed over them. You wanna know why there's so much post-traumatic stress disorder when you spray an aerosolized hallucinogenic drug over people? You watch the movie Jacob's Ladder and you'll see what I'm talking about. That's about the aerosolized BZ. So we do these things to our troops and then we say, <laughs> you're a mental case. Well, they're right now 425,000 people sick out of the 697,000 that served in the first Gulf War. Now, are we to believe that those were all 425,000 head cases we sent to fight that war? I don't think so. But that's what they want you to believe so that you will not take them seriously. So what are these guys doing? They're putting guns to their head. They're ending it all because they cannot take it. And it is so sad, listeners. It is so sad. The listeners to the Power Hour, though, know about this. It's the rest of the world that doesn't. So I hope you'll get Beyond Treason, and I hope you'll get um, those documents shown to other people. Please duplicate those documents. We want all of them duplicated. We want them out there, and we want people talking about this, because it is time that we stop experimentation without consent, because it's going on in, in the public avenue also. You're being experimented on many times, you don't even know it. There's a spraying squadron at Youngstown, Ohio. I don't know if you know that or not. But you can go to the website, gulfwarvets.com, and I encourage you to go to gulfwarvets.com. And if you want to see what the troops that are saying themselves about coming back from Iraq, the second Gulf War and the first Gulf War, go to gulfwarvets.com. There's a bulletin board there where the troops are posting themselves. You can see it there. And you are going to be amazed at what they're saying. Abu Ghraib or Abu Ghraib, whatever you want to pronounce it, let me tell you something, it's going on everywhere over there. And that was only the tip of the iceberg, what you saw. Are they killing innocent people? Absolutely. They say now probably a million people have been killed in Iraq. And a troop that recently called me said, you have no concept of what we're being told to do over there. You have no concept of what we are ordered to do over there. And the thought is, what happens if you deny a direct order on the battlefield? What happens? Yeah. Say it louder. Yeah. Execution. You're right. You think they're going to stand up? Ten minutes. Okay. Let's hit Agent Orange. We'll see how we do here. Let's go to Agent Orange first. Agent Orange was the code name for an herbicide developed for the military primarily for use in tropical climates. The purpose of the product was to deny an enemy cover and concealment in dense terrain by defoliating trees and shrubbery where the enemy could hide. The product Agent Orange was a code name for the orange band that was used to mark the drums in which it was stored. The product was tested in Vietnam in the early 1960s and used at the height of the war in 1967 and 1968. Agent Orange was a 50-50 mix of two chemicals known conventionally 
as 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T. The combined product was mixed with kerosene or diesel fuel and dispersed by aircraft, vehicle, and hand spraying. An estimated 19 million gallons of Agent Orange was used in South Vietnam during the war, potentially affecting 2.5 million Vietnam veterans. On May 5, 1990, Admiral E.R. Zumwalt, Jr., in a classified report, submitted the following. Report to the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs on the association between adverse health effects and exposure to Agent Orange. In that report, he concluded that it was at least as likely as not that the exposure to Agent Orange caused numerous life-threatening, debilitating, and deforming diseases. We do a segment on each one of the experiments. Now I'm going to move into one, um, I'm going to move into the birth defects only because I need you to see how serious this is. Yeah, if this is going to bother you, you need not to look because it's time that we look at what we're doing. Just like abortion, we need to look at what we're doing in this country to abortion. Well, we need to look at what we're doing to these babies also. They are doing it in our name with our tax dollars. Those of you who are supporting that system, they are doing it in our name. Now, I want those of you who can look at this to please understand that this is going on to thousands and thousands of babies in Iraq. Our babies to our troops when they return are going to be like this, we're afraid. And already some of them, one of them is already from a Gulf War veteran's baby. So the number of abnormalities that are, are taking place, it's beyond even statistical, even possibility in any way, shape or form. Let's do the Moray birth effects. Yeah, if there's children, you may not want them to see this. I don't know how you feel about this. Okay, let's do the Moray birth defects. In the civilian population in southern Iraq, the Iraqi doctors are reporting very large increases in cancer, leukemia, diabetes, immune system disorders, and of course birth defects in the newborns. The babies are born without a brain, without eyes, without legs, or without arms. Sometimes the baby is born with a cyclops eye, just one eye in the forehead. And each year, these birth defects are more and more severe. Pediatricians now in southern Iraq are reporting that some babies are born without heads or arms. They're just pieces of flesh. Because Iraq is in an arid region with severe dust storms annually. This remobilizes the depleted uranium on the ground and on the battlefields. And so the civilian population 
will continue to be exposed to increasing levels of DU internally. The severity of the birth defects and radiation-related diseases will increase over time. In fact, depleted uranium is a death sentence. How can we do this to Yahweh God's little creatures? I don't know. But you see, if it isn't shown to you, you're not aware of it. You know the saying that if, uh, if, Dan Rather, if a, a tree falls in the forest you know, and CBS News doesn't tell you about it, does it still make a noise? Well, that's kind of where we are with this. We don't even know what's going on. It breaks my heart every time I see this. Now, our Gulf War troops from Gulf War II are, are going to come back, and that's why they're telling them now to have adoptions rather than births. We are doing this to the entire world. Australia uses depleted uranium weapons, the UK and the US. We need to have a ban on all the weapons. That's the least that we need. We need no war, but we need a ban on, on these weapons. Okay, let's go to uh, Kick to the Curb, which is the next one. This is, that was Loren Murray. She's an independent scientist that was doing that, that was telling you about that. This is um, uh, Troop Bob Jones from the first Gulf War, incredible ranger hero. I just can't imagine how a nation, not only will they take care of their veterans that have returned from war, but you have innocent family members and loved ones that never put their hand up and swore allegiance to fight and defend the Constitution of the United States. And they get kicked to the curb and nobody cares. When you get these health effects, you have to prove the United States Department of Veteran Affairs that you were exposed. And then you have to prove that the health effects that you're seeing were caused by the exposures you have but it's very difficult to do when the medical records have been destroyed, the personnel files have been missing or destroyed. And when you got senior Department of Defense officials continue to state, well, none of these guys are sick. None of these guys are dead. Why don't you ask Sue Reardon someday about Terry? Why don't you ask Sue Sitton someday about John? Or Frank Zuli. Or Mr. Kiefer. Ask his granddaughter why she'll never enjoy her grandfather. And look at the Iraqi women and children and men. Ask the question yourself. Is winning a battle but contaminate air, water, soil, and food? worth the life of your son and daughter? Is it worth the life of the child? Not just those that are alive, but those that are going to be exposed because the contamination remains there for eternity. It's real simple. I was tasked to clean up the uranium munitions by name, by order, during Gulf War I. I was assigned as the depleted uranium project director. I did the research. I prepared the programs. I wrote the regulations for management. I wrote the procedures for management. And I got sick because I served my nation. And I was discarded. I was abandoned. Depleted uranium weapons are designed not only to kill the enemy, devastate the civilian population for generations to come, but DU weapons also destroy the environment 
and damage the economy. In 1996, the United Nations passed a resolution that made DU illegal under international law. In order to protect themselves and continue the illegal usage of depleted uranium, the United States government has co-opted the International Criminal Court, thus protecting certain individuals from war crimes charges. Unbeknownst to most U.S. citizens and unreported in the U.S. media, was the International Criminal Tribunal for Afghanistan held at Tokyo, Japan, December 15th of 2002. Those meetings lasted for over a year. The initial complaint presented for the tribunal charges George Bush with 31 counts of war crimes, violations of the Geneva Conventions and other crimes against peace in the war on Afghanistan. In addition to the original 31 war crime charges against George Bush, the judges and tribunal recommended two additional charges. Number one, Bush knowingly used depleted uranium on the battlefield against his own troops. And number two, that it was in fact a crime against the environment. Dr. Doug Rocky, right now, as he's set there, is very, very ill. He has 2,000 times the amount of safe radiation in his body with no way to get rid of it. Dr. Doug Rocky was a major, he was a physicist, a health physicist, and a major who was asked to go to Iraq in 1991 to clean up the DU. What they found out was that it can't be cleaned up. It is at least six feet deep in the sand, it is smaller than a virus, and you cannot clean it up. Half of his unit, and you'll see his unit on there called uh, um, something raiders that were over there, have died now. So that is the story of depleted uranium that they don't want you to know about. And I encourage you to challenge Fox News, challenge CNN, why they're not telling you about this. Lord Robertson with NATO has refused to disallow the use of depleted uranium. He says, fine, it can be used, it's safe. Well, it's not safe, and it's going to be killing our troops. Now, one other thing, I've, I, I've, before I finish here, is during the Gulf War, the first Gulf War, we provided defective suits to our troops. I don't know if you knew that or not. Defective masks and defective troops. How many of you all know where Raynell, West Virginia is? Yes. All right, they were made in Raynell, West Virginia. I would love to have a picture of the company called Isratex, because I know that I've talked to Pastor Butch, and, and he has told me that he used to go down there and to sell to that company. And all he knew is that there was a lot of secrecy around the plant in Raynell, West Virginia. They made over 800,000 defective chemical suits. Let's do the defective mop suits up at the top. The Department of Defense has long touted that American troops are the best prepared, trained, and equipped in the world. Unfortunately, the equipment that was meant to save their lives may very well have cost them their health in Desert Shield and Storm. Information has now been obtained that proves that the chemical suits sold to the Department of Defense during 1989 were in fact useless. Isratex, a company from Raynell, West Virginia, sold nearly 800,000 defective suits that later proved to be full of tears, holes, and poor stitching. One hole can mean the life or death of a soldier during a chemical exposure. The company subsequently filed for bankruptcy and its owners have never faced accountability for their actions. My unit was located uh, southwest, about 40 kilometers maximum from the Camasilla complex. I can distinctly recall uh, the day that they blew up that complex. The ground was literally shaking under our feet like an earthquake. At Camasilla, we blew up chemical and biological warfare agents. We have videos of those weapons inside the bunker complexes. The Department of Defense refused to address it until 1995 when we were able to come forward with that video and with the after action reports to show the U.S. government had intentionally 
blown up chemical and biological agents without allowing our troops to wear protective gear. Didn't make any difference, the gear was non-functional anyway. So where is the accountability when you send your troops with 800,000 defective chemical suits? And oh, by the way, the GAO released a report right before the second Gulf War that said that 200,000 of those suits are still in inventory and our troops are using them in the Persian Gulf right now. Do they want us to be sick? You answer that question. Okay, let's just finish with, um, uh, let's see here. Let's just finish with the Beyond Trees and Trailer and I'll be done. Let me just say before I, I finish here, that'll be our last segment. This is just put up here so that I can do the clips off of it. The entire DVD is going to be an hour and 40 minutes. And it is going to be very hard to listen to, especially if you have a son or daughter in Iraq right now or somebody that's going to Iraq. All I can say is we have to tell the truth. And it's time that we hold this up to the Department of Defense. And these people need to be put behind bars for the rest of their natural lives, listeners. They need to be behind bars. They need to be arrested, and they need to be held accountable for the crimes against our military. It is beyond treason, far beyond treason. And William Lewis has done a brilliant job in doing this production. William Lewis is also the producer of 9-11 uh, in Plain Sight. And we're just getting started doing the uh, DVDs and the documentaries on the truth. And I encourage you, like I said, to download the documents, get those out to people, get them posted all over the internet so that people will see what has really transpired. Let's just finish with the Beyond Treason trailer. In Gulf War I, our military reported in some cases that they were ill within 48 hours. And of course, they had no idea that they were using depleted uranium weapons and certainly were unaware of the harmful effects. We got sick immediately. Rashes all over their bodies. Brain damage. We were all just exhausted. Excruciating headaches. We had no uh, protection. The president lied. And really what we are are victims of Desert Storm. The civilian population will continue to be exposed to increasing levels of DU internally. In fact, depleted uranium is a death sentence. Individuals are depleted uranium casualties, whether they're civilians or combatants. These people in the Department of Defense are lying not only to the troops, they're lying to the whole world. They're trying to pawn off our nuclear waste as an appropriate mechanism for a military arsenal. What's important for, for people to, to know is that the United Nations has declared this weaponry illegal. And it's important for us to be in receivership of this, to be in receipt of the fact that we are using an illegal weapon. We are breaking the law. If the law doesn't matter and good science doesn't matter anymore, then what does this country stand for? I want to thank Pastor Butch. He just told me that Isratex building uh, in Rainell, West Virginia is now a National Guard headquarters. Isn't that interesting? Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here and I thank you for getting this documentary out. When it comes out, show it to people. Show it to people that are getting ready to join the military. Take it to schools. Take it to the ROTC groups. Say, hey, you want to join? I have no problem with that. But you need to know what you're going to be doing. And you need to know some things. That's what I tell people. I'm not going to tell you not to join the military. I will tell you, though, you'll be used as an experimental guinea pig. And if you don't mind that, then go right ahead. And all I can say to you is that 
the future rests in you. The truth is not out there. It's in people like you. Please get motivated. Please get inspired. Go to your local school. Give them a copy of Beyond Treason. Put it in their library because it tells the story, not just of DU, but of all the experiments that have gone on in the past 50 years. And if you were in the Army in 1950, you're going to be shocked when you find out about the experiments that went on from 48 to 52, the yellow fever vaccine, and why the largest outbreak, 350,000 people got hepatitis and may not even know they have it today. That's what happened. And I say to all of you who serve for the right reasons, thank you. I did too, until I knew better. I'm not anti-military. I want to save their lives, and I want to save this country, and I don't want anyone else to call us and say, my husband just died. Thank you very much.